We are recording the meeting. I call the meeting of the Arts Council of Alaska County January 10, 2022 to order at 5.30 p.m. First is call, or excuse me, first is introduction of new member, Mr. Corey Williams. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, so uh, I won't take up all the time. I have, uh, as an artist, I am an entrepreneur. I have uh, started businesses here in Gainesville, Alaska County, North Central Florida. Um, I'm a writer, currently also a recording artist. I have uh, written two books that are available on Amazon. This one I narrated, and I'm now telling people about it as an artist. Uh, as a person in the background, I've supported artists that have come through this area. A lot of the artists are mainstream artists, um, just about everyone you see on reality TV, uh, a lot of the uh, movie stars from Rick Ross to just about everyone. I've worked with, working those relationships, being in that position to also give back to the community. I've helped others from the community uh, follow their dreams in an entertainment career as well. So it's just been an honor to be a part of Gainesville, be from Gainesville, and to show the youth what they can do, you know, in this community. So thank you all. Thank you. And if anybody wanted to go along and briefly introduce themselves. He was dead at me. Okay. Okay. I'm Chelsea. It's really nice to meet you, Corey. Um, my background is uh, in music. Oh, wow. you. Um, I'm I indulge in all the arts, but uh, but I kind of see myself. I play in a bunch of bands. I'm a multi instrumentalist, songwriter, singer. Toured locally and internationally, and um, uh, founded Girls Rock Camp, which is a music camp for uh, girls and um, and gender expansive. And, um, and yeah, that's that's primarily my background. And I actually know Corey. I'm Carol Velasquez Richardson. Um, been in this area forever. Um, my background is actually in theater and arts management. Um, and I've served on several different arts boards throughout the city, and I also work with um, working with local municipalities to build um, cultural programs within their communities. My name is David. I am just a lover of the arts, all type of arts, um, anything arts and culture related. I try to help promote, try to go there and support. So I'm excited to have you aboard with us. And, and likewise, like I, said, I am big fans of you guys. Because, like I said, I know some of you, Carol, and I'm big fans of the arts and what we've been able to do here. Uh, some of you, uh, you know, with Ms. Jean, I've shared some of what I've done here in the arts since I was six years old. You know, I played the conga drums taught by African instructors from Africa, and those were programs that were funded by the city of Gainesville. And me and my friends got to perform those things at the Thomas Center for the community. So it was just building on those blocks which led me to running my own production company um, and giving those opportunities to other people here to be seen and find and show all the different aspects of the arts that we have here in this community. I work with terrific rock bands during the, the fest. When we have the fest, I usually have my camera, so I'm doing on-street interviews with all these people that come from all parts of the world to Gainesville for the fest. You know, and those are things that we do here from the arts that you know, I know about it, and I would definitely like to be part of exposing, you know, what we do here as the Arts Council. And just, like I said, the things I've been able to do behind the scenes in the entertainment world, I'm everywhere. I, I've touched artists in every aspect, you know, from Gainesville. So we have uh, production facilities here, you know, in our area, so we don't have to go to Atlanta, so we don't have to go to L.A., because those were the things that were pushed upon me for the past 20 years. Oh, you should go here, you should go there. I knew what we had here. And I know that Gainesville is the place where people go to see if they're ready to make it anywhere else, from Drake, uh, everyone. Uh, I remember, like I said, I keep talking about Rick Ross. Uh, he's someone who's, he was a rapper, and he's transitioning now into acting based on advice I gave him years ago, because the music, music is free now, we're streaming, and so artists have to get creative to get paid in a new marketplace. So okay. the things that we do here to promote the arts, I mean, like I said, for the, I've been doing this for so long. I just was called this to be just a part and just to help and just promote what you guys do because the arts saved my life. 
It really did. So the things that you guys are providing for the community, the uh, it, it helps and it works. I know that all the time you guys don't get someone telling you that. Great job. I'm telling you, great job, guys. I, I, it's inspiring. Look at me! Go! Go! Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Quincy Cohen Gosi. I'm an artist and activist. I'm an author. Um, I I do everything with the arts. I started in the arts at the age of nine. Um, <clears throat> now, also <laughs> ages. Um, my my tools as an activist is to, is from paintbrush to cameras, from drums to guitar, uh, percussion, any kind of percussion instrument. Um, what what do you what can I say? Uh, I do a whole lot of stuff. I have a whole lot of stuff going. I have books. I'm co-writing right now an academic book for science. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, the university there with another professor. It's driving me crazy. Is that would be recorded? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Only I heard that. <laughs> um, I'm really from the north, and I come here to the south. I came here to Gainesville in 2003, kicking and screaming because I had a culture shock when I came here. Because when I came here, I looked around. There's no art. There's no art. We are connecting on that level because right. I also I spent seven years in Washington D.C. prior. So from 1994 to 2001, I'm in Washington D.C. But they're having a Black Family Reunion. They're having all these artful things on the mall. Yeah, I'm very used to seeing a lot of art. I'm used to seeing uh, a lot of music. I I used to do be backup singer and whatnot for Femi Cat Call that used to. 2000 band and he's Ibaye now so I don't do any backup with him <laughs> I just do backup with my son <laughs> uh, I am an um, artist called Coochie Bird Jr. and I'm a poet I don't do rap Okay. I'm a poet right. so you know uh, I have an online art gallery um, when you talked about creative ways of artists surviving uh, back in uh I say in the 80s when the internet started really get going, uh, people from England and whatnot was trying to find a, a better way to um, exhibit their art uh, without no overhead. So I so one way is the e-commercial. So I took the playbook from Amazon <laughs> and have an online gallery where I'm featuring like right now four artists, three artists and myself. Uh, what else can I say? I have a nine-year-old. I have a daughter that uh, go to UF to get her PhD in computer science. She wants to put chips in people's heads in the next five, ten years. Well, she want help because I'll have a problem learning to you too. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be able to say that if you need to learn something new, like a new app or something, you can like put like something and you automatically know it and you don't have to like beat your brain to learn it it works for me um that's about it I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this council and you know even as an alternate just to be a part of what's going on in the field with the arts and you know let the people know what's going on you know as well, an artist. Dina then might think that I'm the most radical for an <laughs> <laughs> We have online members. That we do. So we have David Sutton. David, did you want to take a second and introduce yourself? Hey, good evening. Sorry I can't be there tonight, but I, I got caught with the uh, COVID junk, and I went today for waiting on my clearance test to come back, but uh, hello, Corey. Glad you're with us. I'm now not the new person. Uh, me, uh, I, I am. I work for the city of High Springs as the uh, community redevelopment agency coordinator, and 
I, I know nothing about art, but the one thing I appreciate and the reason I'm on here is in this world of go, go, go that we live in nowadays, to me, art's the one thing that kind of makes you slow down and appreciate what's around you, what's in front of you, whether it's visual or musical, whatever it might be. So I, I'm just here, like the rest of them, try to keep some art in the world nowadays. I, I'm no art expert by any means, but I just, I, I truly appreciate the arts and grew up in a home where all my grandmothers, great grandmothers, uncles, everybody played the piano. So just have a, a appreciation for everything and trying to learn a little bit more about it through this and and help this group out in Lachua County. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Dave. Hi, Rena. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello everybody. This is Irina Kanishiva and I specialize in public art, specifically murals. Uh, I have created uh, quite a lot of artworks here in Gainesville with different <clears throat> artists and now I'm focused more on platform. That's it. Also, nice to meet you, Arena. Thank Lucia, you. would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, hello and welcome, Corey. Uh, my name is Lucia Curda, and uh, I've been uh, a member since this summer. Um, I'm uh, a historian by training. I have a doctorate in history uh, and uh, also art historian. I worked in museum studies for a number of years, and I'm also um, uh, doing, um, I'm also into uh, public uh, policy. Uh, and um, uh, I lived in Gainesville for quite a number of years, actually since uh, 1999. So once again, welcome, and we are very glad to have you. Thank you, Lucia. So next would be item number three, which is- Oh, oh we forgot one. Oh, staff, sorry. <laughs> oh, the blue hair girl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, nice to meet you, Corey. My name is Lira. I am procurement agent for uh, the Arts Council in the Lost County. And um, I have a bachelor's degree in computer sciences, but I am a mixed media artist. Uh, I work with acrylic, pencils, watercolors, and whatever else I can get my hands on except for music. Mm -hmm. Don't get me. <laughs> 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 no rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I am originally from Puerto Rico, and I have been in the States since 2014. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. You're stressing me. I was going. <laughs> no, I got this. Which one must be there? Thank you, everybody. And now, item number three, which is approval of tonight's agenda. And a motion. I a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next is item four, which is the approval of the minutes from December 6, 2021, which is right behind the agenda. Motion to send a motion to that as well. Second. Motion to approve. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving right along would be item number five, which is the call to artist ranking for fire station, fire station 40. Their phone numbers, their email, and their website that they provided to Monochrome. 
Um, so as you can see in here, you have things uh, we have to include the uh, the store how the uh, heavens gracious I cannot talk today. I'm sorry. So we were so we were supposed to use the criteria that we posted out in the car for this document, and that was not it. We were not able to do that in one accountable. So hopefully you all get got a chance to look at the spreadsheet that was sent to you and fill that out. I didn't get it. The, since our last meeting. I emailed it out. I did not see it. No. So it's not, not okay. So what we can do? Um, when did you email it? Uh, probably seven weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Actually, I think it was on that during that same week. Um, oh, it was late. It was later the week of our last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Was this the this the one that I passed on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we did get from Lucia. I mean, I checked my email. And, you know, so I know some of you for sure got it, but that's okay. So if you didn't get it, we can postpone it. Yeah. I mean, however you guys decide to do, do it. it. Uh, I was still. I don't know if I would need a motion for that. I don't think so because okay. we're we, we just don't have it. All right. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, so we were, we will send it out. Um, David, I already have your scores, so I don't need to worry about you. Um, we have Irina. Lisa and Irina. And yeah. Irina. Yeah. So, yes. I'm new, so we just play your scores on this. No. You are exempt. <laughs> <All right. laughs> For the next call to artist, uh, yeah. Danielle. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so I guess that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> okay. So let me close this up for you. Uh -huh. um, I, I would say that I did look at the different sites that was provided, like a couple of them were Instagram and yeah. stuff like that. The, there was only one that really had like a CV oh, yeah. that had everything that was on the little thing. Um, yeah. Most of them just had contact page on their website or their past murals, locations and stuff like that, but not really anything, anything concrete, that concrete or in detail as to, you know, what. So what, what, that's what we leave up to your, yes. you know, uh, your expertise to see. So this person has this information in here, but left this out. As long as you're consistent throughout the board, um, Uh, I guess we're tabling this one. I would take us to number six, which is Heart of High Springs Wall Dogs Launch. So on the call with us, we have Sharon and Nancy. And so um, I did email out to you some information that they had shared. So hopefully everybody had a chance to review it. So I'm going to turn it over to, I think, Sharon. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for hosting us um, today. Um, I want to introduce Nancy Lavin, the president of Heart of High Springs. Nancy, are you on? I'm on, and I just want to jump in here and say something real quick. Carol Richardson, four years Hi. ago, four years ago, you came with the first group of people to explore the wall dogs coming to Alachua County. And here we are four years later, finally <laughs> launching this off the ground. So you were part of that Hi. original group. Thanks for being supportive of us. You're welcome. My pleasure. Nancy, will you give us the elevator speech about Wall Dogs? And then I'll go into the specifics about how we'd like to engage the Arts Council. Okay. Um, four years ago, a little over four years ago, one of our local um, art people was doing a mural on a wall in High Springs, and he talked about a group named the Wall Dogs that came to a town and did about 15 murals in a five day period that told the history of the town. And I was really intrigued by that for High Springs. At that time, I was a city commissioner in High Springs. And Carol and um, our- no, this is the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? Carol, our chamber president, um, myself, our CRA director, and a couple other people met with the wall dog contact and started doing working towards this particular project. 
Um, over this process, we became a nonprofit. We incorporated to do this project and other arts projects in our community. And we are at the point now where we're going to launch it um, with a mural in a one week event. And then in March of 2023, we will have the larger festival. And our CRA director from High Springs is on the call tonight. So he's well aware and he's a local boy that grew up in High Springs and is helping us get the history. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so what we're specifically working, what, wanting to work with you y'all on is um, something that Gina actually suggested, which is a policy roundtable um, on um, public art and public places. Uh, we have had a little bit of backlash and some, con some concerned citizens and wondering why we wanna put murals on all of these old buildings and that sort of thing. And so what we thought we would do is, as you've probably seen in the, in the document that, was a, that you were sent, is that on Monday, the 14th of March, what we would like to do is host a policy roundtable, not only with Alachua County folks, but from the surrounding counties, the tourist development councils, the CRAs, um, if there's any other arts councils around that we can find. Um, I know you guys are probably leading the, the pack on that one in the area. Um, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, for y'all to join us and um, in, in developing and hosting a very, very vibrant conversation on policy are regarding art in public places. I love the murals in High Springs. Yep. They're beautiful. Thank you. Part of our, our uh, in involvement this year will be a, a walking tour of the existing murals that, you know, that are already are on walls. Um, so that folks can get an idea that, you know, High Springs has always been a mural town. Um, some people think that they never existed before, it, for, it seems, but um, we, we do have, and a lot of small towns in Florida have, have um, lots of murals as well. So I'd like to, certainly if you have any questions or any ideas, we'd certainly love to hear from you. Uh, my name is Corey Williams, I'm an alternate, and I have a question. Uh, do you have a social presence uh, for the public to look at the murals? Like, have you done a walkthrough video, walkthrough of the murals and put together some kind of presentation for the public? We'll be launching that on March um, March 12th um, when we launch this, this, this initial predecessor to the final, um, to the big mural next year, the big mural festival next year. We actually are gonna be working with the TDC with their software that they are offering to the community. Um, and we'll have a, a visual, uh, you know, an oral history kind of thing with, with each, the history of each mural um, and the walking tour with a brochure and that sort of thing. That will, and, and we're doing that as a pilot program because we have about eight murals right now that we've documented. But of course, next year we'll more than double that amount. And so we'll, our walking tour will then grow, um, you know, more than double um, next year and we'll be around for, for a very long time. So yes, we, we are developing that now. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Carol. I have a question. Um, the idea of about a art and public policy um, roundtable, um, would you want to do that? Why did you choose the 14th? Would you want to do that much earlier? Um, if it's about letting people know why murals are important to support this project? We're really, what we're trying to do is focus on this week to really call attention to the murals of High Springs, art in public places as, um, as a historical document as well as art. Um, and, and we okay. feel that if we concentrate our effort in this one week, don't forget, this is the predecessor to the big festival. So we really feel that this, that this week will, will attract a lot of attention. We'll get a, we'll, we also have opportunity for community feedback and comments, um, meet the wall dogs, that sort of thing. We're gonna have some social uh, events, that sort of thing. So we also have been trying to secure uh, speakers. We have um, the Florida Humanities Council has a speakers bureau that we've been relying on, but we are also looking at other folks who might wanna come and help us, you know, talk to the folks um, about how the importance of public art and how murals fit into that. I have, a question. I have a question. So how is your project, your murals, your, your project, how is it uh, economically benefiting? 
Well, the tourism, um, <clears throat> as you know, probably High Springs is a, is a hot spot for tourism already, but we're gonna be, be providing folks with an additional reason to come to town. Um, the historical backgrounds will be on display. We'll have an, a vibrant social media campaign as well as we'll be do, doing some out of county advertising, hopefully with the, with the help of the TDC. Um, so we'll be bringing folks in, in from out of town as well as I think, you know, High Springs of course is at the corner of several counties. I mean, we, we, we're very, very close to Columbia Union and Gilcrest. So we feel like we'll be able to draw from multiple counties um, to our area and hopefully become for, especially for those small towns. I mean, Gainesville's done a wonderful job with murals and we, what we, maybe we're hoping that, that some of these small towns in our area will, will get on the bandwagon and use this as a vehicle for celebrating another, their history. Another thing is we've worked extensively with other cities that have had this festival with this group of artists and they overall positively have talked about the increase in economic um, tourism in their communities, how it's helped to fill their hotels, how all of a sudden people started changing the way they were taking care of buildings in the surrounding area. There was more pride in the community and their downtowns became full. We've talked to multiple cities. This has been done every single year since the early 90s and we were selected as the first city to have um, the wall dogs come and do a festival in the whole <clears throat> South region. So they, people travel from all over the world to come and look at these mural towns. And we, that's part of our agreement that we have to make sure that we're doing that advertising and it will keep High Springs vibrant and healthy as well in our downtown businesses will thrive from this. Hey, I have another question. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, tired of me. <laughs> uh, no. My next question. Okay. Um, murals has been has been very popular, and it has it has brought economics to many cities. But that was before COVID. So how are how are you planning to show or provide of anything to anybody about? these times, you know, economically, how it's going to benefit through COVID? Well, I mean, the walking tour certainly will be an outside event. Um, and if you, if you get a chance to look at the um, activities, we have selected alternate outdoor, outdoor facilities just in case come March 12th, we're still in trouble. Um, so we are looking at outdoor facilities and we have a lot of really great spaces. I mean, High Springs is a beautiful town and especially it's downtown. David Sutton, I'm sure could spend an hour talking to you about that. But um, so we do have a, a vibrant community where we can host a lot of different things. Um, and, and we, I wanna be sensitive. We definitely wanna be sensitive about the COVID you know, situation, but outdoor activities, you know, certainly is the safest thing, safest way to go for sure. Is that, are you quoting something from the CDC? <laughs> no. Well, I have been, I have been monitoring, believe me, once I got the list together for our locations and I, and I have, I've had my own personal experience with COVID as a long hauler. So um, I want to make sure that we are as safe as possible in case we do need um, an alternative site. Um, my, re my research um, through one of the CDC's resources says that Florida will hit its peak on February 12th. So we'll see what happens. So um, we actually had been chosen to have the big wall dogs festival in 2022. So in March of 2022 was when we were slated to be on their calendar that was pushed back to 2023 due to COVID and Sharon and the team that she's working with on our board have been very intentional about setting up those alternate sites. We have a beautiful farmer's market pavilion. We have lots of areas outdoors in the downtown walking area so that we could do this launch safely. And hopefully in another year when we hit 2023 and have this large event, we should have a much better situation. Um, but there's been some very intentional planning and Sharon has been on top of watching those, those forecasts from CDC. That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, sorry, just to be clear, what you're requesting from us are um, recommendations of people to sit on the round table for this event? 
Yes, not only to sit on the round table and participate, but also to help and help us invite our like minded, you know, um, individuals who, who are stakeholders and policy makers, city commissioners, county commissioners, um, TDC representatives, uh, CRA representatives uh, in multiple counties and multiple cities um, across the region. Uh, I think that um, we could really, you know, I think this is, is a timely conversation and um, certainly Art in Public Places has always been an important um, thing to, to be considered. Uh, I, I've worked in other areas where it was, you know, much more, um, it was much more important earlier on in the conversation. Um, and I'm so glad now that Alachua County has a policy and, and a mandate for funding. Um, and wouldn't it be nice if more counties followed that, that process? I was just looking at the website and it looks like an amazing event. I'm excited mm -hmm. to attend. Um, I was going to say Irina should present. Uh, she has a lot of experience with murals. We'd love it. <clears throat> We'd love it. Some other ones. One of the things they're not saying that um, this Waldorf project has the potential of bringing in at least 250 artists to High Springs as well as employing several local artists from the Latra County. So it's not only just the murals that is the art, but the actual artists give it, being able to bring in artists and they stay for like a week and they put these beautiful murals up within a week. So they work literally hours. So that's an event in itself, just the, the, the process of creating the art. Oh, these artists are getting paid? Um, there's there's stipends. There'll be stipends. Wall dogs. Um, the wall dogs come in on. They pay for their own travel. We house them um, and feed them through volunteer efforts with the community, which we'll be working with. Um, this year, we'll be doing a mini version of that with one, only one mural. And so you'll be able to come. Any anyone in the community can come and watch the mural be created from from the first night that we start to project the image um, onto the wall. <clears throat> and then do the outline to 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 actually the painting. It's going to be a very interactive. Um, I know several of us, Nancy and I, were both there sitting um, in our lawn chairs watching um, with the first mural that the, that the Springs um, Institute had put up, uh, um, where they closed off the street. People sat in, in the street drinking their coffee, watching the painting going on. Um, and, as, and some of us actually got to put our put our um, hands on the wall <laughs> and actually do some work. So it was a lot of fun. It's an interactive. Um, uh, envir environment. Carol was there that night. Carol Richardson yeah, was there that night. Um, so the other thing that's really important about this particular event and why we chose to work with this is, is the history piece. It's about preserving the history as our town is changing and growing, preserving the history that makes it so unique. And this week-long event that we are wanting you guys to be part of, we actually will have about 25 topics that the public will be invited, our, our members of our community will be invited to come in and vote on their favorites. And that's gonna finalize what our topics for our actual 2023 murals are gonna be. So this is a community participation event on the, on the decision of the murals. There's gonna be community members out there helping paint. They have things that kids can do from as little as three or four years old to elderly people. It's, it's a very interactive process. The Wild Dog Group is a group of artists who um, were trying to preserve the art of being able to do old time advertising murals. And they started these festivals to teach their skill. And it grew into this wonderful annual event that everybody loves to go to. So they plan their vacations. There's international people that come over here every year to do this. But it's a community building event. It's a, a historic preservation and an art in public places. So there's a lot of a lot of notes that get hit with this event. And believe me, it's a lot of work. We're working really hard um, behind the scenes. And we really want the Arts Council and, and all of the members to know what we're doing out there and come and be a part of it because it's a it's a really wonderful opportunity for Alachua County to differentiate itself from all the other surrounding counties. And we're really excited that we've gotten this far four years later. So thank you so much. And keep in mind that, that we are gonna have national attention. This is a national, regional, I mean, High Springs is the first. Um, Alach so Alachua County is the first um, of this kind. So um, I think that's gonna help our area. Um, I think that's gonna, it can't, it, can't do it any harm to get some national national press and some you know regional press would be great. 
not yet. Hi, Brina. Are you interested? <laughs> you were nominated. <laughs> Sorry, Irina. Thank you. Yeah. We'd love to have everybody there as well um, to participate, to be in the audience, whatever. Um, we'd love any participation that y'all would be interested in having. Um, well, since that's my region, I guess I'll, I'll definitely be there. <laughs> this is Carol. That's I'll a given, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, item seven, which is the call to artists update. Okay. Which Can we actually go back to that for a minute? So, are we? Do we have to make any type of motion that says that we're going to be presenters, or we're just going to have our, our arena? And, okay. okay. Good with it, so we're set. Okay. And so Sharon, I'll, I'll circle back with you so that you know how to get a hold of Irene and you guys can coordinate. That'd be great. And, and I hope you'll allow us to um, to name you as a co-sponsor simply because of your participation. I really would appreciate that if we could just um, name you as a co-sponsor if you don't have any difficulty with that. We're not asking for money. If we, we, we understand that we missed the mark on, the, on funding, but we appreciate your support. Sounds great. Item seven, which is the call to artist update, which we have a couple. So the first one is the West Lawn Sculpture. So as I had sent to you an email, the Board of County Commissioners uh, decided to honor Dr. Patricia Hilliard Nunn with a San Sofa sculpture. Uh, the budget is $100,000, but we have a uh, anonymous donor who has offered to give half. So for those of you who don't know what a Sankofa is, it's a bird and it's uh, reaching behind its back to get a very delicate egg. Um, and so the board really liked the idea, you know, our, our county slogan is where nature and culture meet. So they kind of feel like that ties in together. Uh, Dr. Hilliard Nunn, she had a close interest in the Sankofa and I really don't have any details on like why or how or any of that. Um, she wrote a paper on the Stan Colfer movie had came out. And the Stan Colfer movie um, starring, oh yeah, Fumi K. Ogulano, where she met that, that family used to live here. And uh, I believe Patricia was a media uh, communi communication where her got her degree in. And when the movie came out, she did a paper and I think the paper got published, but ever since then, I think she fell in love with the, the bird sniffing his butt. Just while I see it. Delicately picking up an egg. <laughs> yeah. And she was actually a documentary filmmaker. <laughs> and her father was Asa Hiller, which was a world famous um, archaeologist. So her, her, her involvement with the Sam Kofa bird, but also just history in general, runs really, really deep for her, so. Well, the reason why I said Sankofa, because I know the Sankofa people, because the, the star of the Sankofa is my daughter's aunt. So, <laughs> it's my daughter's aunt. So I kind of know the, um, and the it, but there is an organization called the Sankofa, mm -hmm. um, which is done by uh, uh, Billy, like, what's his name, Billy Fonse? Um, he started the San Cofa organization for artists, activists. So, but he doesn't have the bird on there. <laughs> but what it was supposed to be about uh, is if you've seen one slave movie, you saw another. And the San Cofa movie was about slaves. So, you know, maybe that was her interest in it, but, but it's a it's a piece of art. Mm -hmm. So I did send out the draft call to artists, so I don't know if everybody had a chance to I see that. Didn't have any I didn't any have any. Nope. So um, hearing none, we would like to go ahead and advertise through Mono Chronicle. And so all artists who have ever submitted anything to the county, Lyra has a distribution list, so it automatically goes out to those folks. Plus, we also, through uh, the county communications team, you know, we send out press releases, all that kind of stuff. So we plan to really get the word out. Okay. Right. Just on that, on that thing where I said you can't say all African Americans accepted and adopted Sankofa. And I 
Don't that go home. I, I don't believe I have that in here. Okay. Yeah, well, on the first time. On the first time I said, Gina, this is not right. Um, I am concerned with the monochronical. Okay. So it doesn't repeat the same thing of not having the criteria in there for them to evaluate. So you will have to fill out the criteria and separate piece of paper. Okay. Yeah, or any other, are some of them going to be monophonical? I've got uh, the plan with the exception of the Poet Warrior Club. Oh, that one in a minute. But what I was thinking is show us your existing work, yeah. existing sculptures, material. Then, and, okay. Yeah, material, that kind of thing. Pick your top ones and then we'll pay $150 for the top two or three to show us what their interpretation of what the sand proposal would look like. Great. I think it kind of works with the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I think it works. Yeah, it, I just so wanted to oh. that's up there. Oh, yeah, so I, what I usually do, uh, so I, it says, if you want to approve it, so Monday and then that Wednesday, that crisis, and minimum two weeks, so I usually give it a month. So you'll be able to come back in March. March or April, like? Probably March, for your meeting in March. Okay. I think Irina had a comment. Yes, I just wanted to say that if we request artists to provide the resumes, uh, they can be displayed on monochronical so that uh, we can use that criteria. Or as long as we are clear about criteria and uh, what we expect from artists, it's all going to work well. So, what I actually need is the scoring. So, I will need a place for, if Monochronical is able to do that, a place where uh, the evaluators can put their 10, 50 points for each criteria because I will need that for record keeping. Yes, yeah, so uh, we can discuss this. I will fit, I will fit it. But just, uh, we can talk separately about it and I will fit it exactly as you need it. Yeah, so, I'll give it to you later then, uh, probably tomorrow, if you don't mind. Sure, thank you. All right, thank you. Next is B under call to orders, which is the fire station 33. So I'm going to uh, show everybody uh, sketches that were received that are going to the Board of County Commissioners on January 25th. <clears throat> So it's up to the Board of County Commissioners at this. All right, so there is uh, one of them. One of the artists did two rendering so you can see it's kind of a slightly different color scheme and then also the cars down here this is a side view and here's like the front view uh, this one that kind of represents all different kinds of so those will be presented to the board of county commissioners C, which is Cuscoilla. So um, with Cuscoilla, I need to um, write up the scope of services. But what uh, we've talked about is a wall that uh, whenever the campers are dropped off and there's like a mural on the exterior wall, you know, and the families can get pictures before they, you know, leave their babies behind for a week for camp. And um, then also on each of the cabins, so we have several buildings that if we could get some native uh, animals, you know, so maybe there's the turkey or the gator or the rattlesnake, and then that kind of has like rattlesnake, <laughs> turtle, rattlesnake. Okay, Tur deer. I won't go in okay. that. Area. Right. Deer, okay. We're gonna handle that. Lizards, turtle, <laughs> <the> turtle. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we're thinking that the kids would be like, oh, I'm in the gator cabin too, you know, and so that would kind of bring them all together. <laughs> I have not had a chance, honestly, to write up the, uh, the scope of services, but that's what, you know, talking to the staff, talking to the friends of Cuscoola, those are their immediate thoughts. Also, the Board of County Commissioners really wanted to have a really great sign out on 441 so people know, 
like that's where couch gorilla is and you know how to so that is a signage is could be something that is more artsy. So it's not just a road sign. I mean, could it be something like made out of wood? Somebody yeah. did some carving, like yeah. carve somebody that like carves it. In. It would be yes, if we could. But it's also so 441 is a federal or state road, so there might be some special rules with okay. putting things in a state or federal right of way. So it's not like um. I can just go to our county engineer and say, hey, Ramon, I want to do this, and he, like, figures it out. He's got to deal with other people who have okay, to okay. figure it out. So that was a little more complicated, Okay. but that would be something super nice. And then there's a lot more recognition, too, like going down 441. I mean, there's a lot of people that drive 441, so there's going to be a lot of people that would see that art. Um, let's see. Um, next up on the list is the Poet Laureate. So I did send that call to artists out. I was thinking maybe waiting a little longer. So our current Poet Laureate, he is it until September 30th. So we have time. So it's not like there's a huge rush. But, you know, I was thinking maybe if we start advertising like March, then we start uh, going through the process like April, May, it goes to the board like June. And by the time, then it's a seamless transition. So it's not like we have a gap. So if the president uh, laureate wants to continue, he will have to reapply. Reapply because he's already oh. extended all. He's already done all of his renewals. Okay. So he has done September 30th. He has to reapply. And the last oh. go around, there was only two, right? Him and Terry. So there, I think I so. Say there were three. five. Oh. Yes, there, there were three. three. There were three. The three. There was three. Oh. Yeah, it was the one for the lady from the library. And, yeah. and then Terry Bailey. Terry. And we have their contact to obviously have yes. if they're interested in applying. Is that a paid position? What are they? What is yes, they get a very small stipend. It's uh, I've actually offered to increase at three thousand dollars, so for two thousand for a term. And how long is it? For a year. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think the first one it was two years with one additional one year renewal, yep. something like that. So two thousand per year. Yeah, so what we usually do, we would, but actually, yeah, for so our other person by March, that will also hopefully have it awarded by either August or September. We should. But not use a monochronicle for that one, because what I was thinking is they would do either an audio or a video. This is my original poem that I'm reading to you, so you can hear how they talk, you know, how their, their poetry flows. And then um, if you wanted to invite them in, but you could just listen to it, you know, like at home and fill out the score sheet. Okay. All right, so our goal for that one will be March. In addition, uh, to, in addition to like a regular press release or whatever, is there ability to do like a short PSA clip or video clip or basically announcing that we're looking for? Yeah, oh. yeah I think I could Yeah, like a short 30 second whatever commercial. Yeah. I believe Kettle and Mr. Corey had hands up. Yeah, I, I have my hands up. Um, I, I, this, I had no idea about a role as that was even a thing to do or be. Um, I am a poet. My books are all about that. <laughs> I find myself in a curious situation because like I said, I've been following Mr. Stanley, he's one of my role models, mentors. And like I said, I was like, what? Oh. I would like to, now that I know that there's a thing called that, I would like to also be in that mix so I wasn't sure how that's going to be shaped. You probably have to ask uh, Miss Gina. So well, how you yeah. Oh, no, 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 we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But if you do want to apply, every time we talk about the Poet Laureate, you would have to, what we call, recuse yourself. And so I have a form that you have to fill out, and it's because you've applied. Now, if uh, you're selected, then any time we talk about that kind of stuff, you have to recuse yourself. But if you're not selected, you get to participate every step of the way. That's my life, Miss. You know. <laughs> so, like I said, I had no idea. You're in the right place. It's okay. And I respect my elders. I respect my mentors. I just I'm moving forward. And like I said, I I love the arts. You know, yeah. 
that's an awesome thing that Charlie did even create that because like I said I, I love plays and like I said Mr. Stanley I love him you know <laughs> it's like I am motivated to keep doing what I do because of that and like I said I, I want to do everything fair and all the things but man I, I eat poetry I live it I breathe it I say it it's just for me to do so I just, like I said, I didn't want that to be an issue. but It would not be an issue. We're an advisory board to the county commission. I think the issue would be is what your role is. What do you want from this organization? Because we're really here to serve the arts community in Alachua County. And we're an advisory board to the board of county commissioners. But each of us, we might find something that we like doing. Oh, you know, I might want to apply to do this mural. Or I want to apply to be the poet laureate. So you don't have to feel any kind of way about it. If that's something you want to apply for, then by all means, you know, apply for it. But like Gina said, you just can't participate in the discussions. And I would even go as further, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chair, saying that maybe just leave the room when we're talking about the poet laureate. Um, more so than just, I'm just not going to talk. Um, that would be the only thing I would do, just for That'd yourself. Okay. And like I said, I want everyone. So you're okay. no, just, just, in, just in case you say something that might hurt your feelings. Right. Right. I mean, that's what I would do because um, as the Port Laureate spouse, I did it. I didn't vote. I didn't participate. But I actually even left the room. So I, I didn't get a copy of the applications or anything. Thank you so much. So. Did your husband? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I did, and I even actually told him don't apply because I'm on the board and I don't want you to call it. <laughs> this is about me, not you. <laughs> right. You know? But we understand we all have you know aspirations and you should not feel any kind of way. If it's something you want to go for, go for it. Thank you. You know, yeah. like I said, we you know become a member of the board, which was you know a great blessing. You know, and also. Uh, this gift I've been given to do, you know, I was like, once the email came, I was like, well, um, I, I I have to ask this question, you know, I've never been a cheater, believe in doing things the right way, so, you know, uh, I've been waiting for this moment, to, like I said, to ask you guys, you know, because I don't want to resign from this thing, I've lived my whole life to get to this point, uh, you know, and, well, I think you have something to bring to the table because there are other artists out there that just want to be just like you and say, like, you know, with your background of everything you just shared with us could be an asset. Plus, too, it's nice to have an African-American male on this um, board. We've never had an African-American male. And that's a perspective. And people look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? I mean, that's important. That, no, that's you know? that, that, that was. You know, and so I think that that's a great thing to show that we're even diverse within our own um, council. There's never and been look an African American man. No. That was a big deal. That is a big deal, yeah. So. Like I said, I know that answers questions for other people who, like I said, they have these desires, and you know, it's like they feel okay. Well, I can't do that, and I have to quit this. You know, uh, like I said, this, like I said, this community. For whatever reason, our community has been great for the arts. And I know if I didn't have the arts, I had the streets. Mm -hmm. So the alternative will always choose the arts. So by doing that, I've gained so much, guys. You know, I've gotten so far. You know, and I just want to show the youth out there that you do have those bad options. But if you stay good, go through some tests. And, you know, like I said, I didn't believe I would be an author. I never thought to do any of this stuff. It just happened. You know, and so to have this opportunity, you know, especially an opportunity like that where I saw Mr. Stanley, you know, it was like, that's the one I looked up to, you know, and now to be able to be in the same air, you know, as those individuals, hopefully it's the kids that I've been around for the past 12 years who will be like, well, one day I'll be like Mr. Williams, you know, and inspiring. So, like I said, this, all this stuff is important. Uh, and like I said, nobody's patting you guys on the back. I'm here to do it right now. So, like I said, thank you all. Uh, and God, like I say, top dog. I have to soak up all the knowledge I can from you. So like I said, this is great. It wasn't my uh, my goal to be the first, you know, male anything. Because as a Marine, I see all of us as green. We just different shades of green. So like I said, that's how I've gotten to everything and be friends with everybody. Uh, and like I said, I'm just, the boards I've been on, the things I've been able to learn here in this community, I know that we have a great community. Uh, I've been in places like D.C., 
Virginia, I've been all kinds of places. And so the crimes and the things that I saw the youth get into in those places, I definitely didn't want to have that here. So, you know, the arts things, the things we do, the high screens program, I can't wait, you know, to tell people about that because spray cans, you know, and paint, we do murals all the time, but to see some professional people do it professionally, get recognized for it in a positive way, uh, those are things that are so helpful to the youth. That's, you gotta be careful the sun shine low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, the last uh, item on the call to artists is the sports event. So that one's a doozy. There's actually three, three call to artists. So um, they they have requested um, silhouettes that are um, sports themed to be on the outside of the building. Then also an interior mural and an exterior statue. So I didn't know if anybody had any proposed changes to the call to artists, but I also sent it to the sports event center team group and they've asked till the end of the week, you know, to submit any changes. So I don't know that we're expecting any changes, but just heads up that since they were looking at it, they may have some proposed changes as well. You guys are gonna be like slam busy with all these calls. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's good. So, did anybody have any proposed changes for any of those three? Yeah, I nope. It's like they're all kind of the same thing. Once you like oh. read one, you've like read them all. <laughs> I knew it. Yep. <laughs> all right, good deal. How can I mix up? <laughs> this is the conversation you've all been waiting for. Uh, <laughs> next is the artist uh, artist conference discussion. So with the very highly contagious Omicron variant, the county has asked me to relate to you to please consider either A, going virtual with the conference, or B, postponing it. They just don't want to have like a super spreader event in the county property, you know, from us all hanging out together for like an eight hour day. So does anybody have a strong opinion one way or the other? It's like I kind of hate the virtual thing because I've sat in on so many of those over the past couple of years, but I also hate delaying it again because we've already done that. So I, I would say to I think twice, right? Yes, ma'am. Delay it so that it can be in person and virtual once we can get there. Uh, but obviously it's up to the board because I, I also wouldn't want to see it just to be completely virtual. I think it would not be as satisfying. Satisfying or productive if it's virtual, just like watching a. So. Yeah, like networking matters, I think. Yeah. For, for I just completed a program at UF and we did the whole thing virtual. And at the end, you know, I got my certificates, I got my stuff, but it didn't feel because we didn't get the network questions. You know, it didn't really feel as complete when it was over. It just, you know, but as a first, you know, it's, no one knows what to really expect. So, how many people have um, so far registered? Registered for the in person for in person. So, uh, twenty three in person, two virtual. Okay. Wow. They wanted virtual. They would have registered for virtual. Yeah. So I think a delay would work if people understand. I prefer to delay as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and notify all of the registrants and I'll also notify the speakers. And then again, so when our, you say, sponsors, but our yeah. sponsors have been great. So we yeah. need to be very nice to them because they have let us keep the money and I've had it since oh, I think wow. 2019. So oh, wow. So, generous. Yeah. so you say delay. How, how long like, um, is the delay? Maybe March? So the spike there. Yeah. Uh, so do we want to discuss again maybe at our February meeting to see if we feel comfortable? That quote spike so you're saying the spike's supposed, supposed to go down by March? So what I heard today, and I don't know if it's true or not, maybe it was even in this, oh yeah, it was just in this meeting where she said that yeah. the spike would be February 12th. And I asked, was that CDC? And she <laughs> said yes. no. I thought she said yes. No. Re replay the tape. Replay the tape, somebody. <laughs> yes. A lot of people get together, that's a given. Touching base at our next meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love over here with my PowerPoint like. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so we 
we're gonna just this gonna we're gonna discuss this again in our next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, have a seat. Have a fire. Comfortable or we're not ready yet. We'll just have it on every agenda until. Oh my God. The zombies. <laughs> <laughs> alien. <laughs> oh my God. To the aliens and the zombies, come right. Uh, Next is number nine, which is the revised logo discussion. I like it. So uh, at our last meeting, you asked for a couple of uh, minor changes, you know, so the A looks more like an A instead of a C. It kind of looks like a cat. And also uh, kind of refining the R, so you can see the first one is still uh, kind of a, a line. The second one very much looks like an R, and the third one even more looks like an R. So those are the changes that she made. She made the, she took away that swoosh that made it look kind of like a C that said cats, and then she refined the R a couple of times here. So I don't know if anybody had any preferences. The last one. The last, last one. For me. The last. So why that S have to be so big? <laughs> I can ask her to make the S a little smaller. So the last one was the S smaller. Yeah. It, it was. See. Look at it. Actually, I just think that the R is too small compared yeah. to the other. That could be. Maybe that's it. Light. Maybe the R and the T could be bigger. Okay. Or or because if the, if the R stays. Well, because usually the, the the R the R should be the same line as this line and the T. You know what I'm saying? It should okay. be up a little bit. So do you guys think then with that change we're ready to go or do you want to see it again at the February meeting? It make tell them make the S a little bit smaller. So the R bigger, S smaller. Yeah. Yeah. It, this the R should be in harmony so with, with the two lines. Like this line bigger, and that line, it should be in harmony. A little smaller. I think she, what she means is that line for the A, mm -hmm. press everything to that height. Yeah. Right. See, the A and the T yeah. have this, this height okay. going on. And that R. Uh, and here I am talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. And that S can be a small S. Why is it capital? See, I'm thinking the S is like a cap, like capital S, like the capital A. I don't know. So did you want to see it again or kind of put those yeah. changes? Go? Well, I, I don't get the majority of the vote anyway, so <laughs> well, you don't get the vote. <laughs> <laughs> I can say no, whatever you might say yes. So you've been saying the C again. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.